Hey, it's Ryan from 2MinuteTennis.net, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to serve 100 miles per hour. Please consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell. Even share this video with a friend, as those are the best ways to support this channel. All right, now first, a disclaimer. If you are a beginner, if you're someone who's got a 40, 50, 60 mile an hour serve, it's going to be pretty tough in one video to show you some tips that are going to double the speed of your serve. But if you're an intermediate, intermediate player, if you're an advanced player, and you can serve in the mid 80s, 90, this video is going to get you over the hump and get you serving triple digits. So first, how you're holding the racket. You have to make sure that you're holding the Continental, and I'm gonna show you a, a little tweak you can make in the Continental to help you serve faster. But just make sure that your base knuckle of your index finger and your heel pad, if you're right-handed, are placed along bevel number two here, that's the right-hander's Continental, and as a lefty, right here. You've gotta make sure that your base knuckle and heel pad are on bevel number two, it's also known as the chopper grip, but it's the Continental, and that's gonna help you to serve your fastest serves. But one little tweak you can make is move your hand down slightly so that some of your heel pad is hanging off. Just doing that, I know for me, has helped me to be looser and more relaxed and has allowed me, and it made me feel like I could whip the racket faster through contact. If you hang your hand off too much, you won't actually want to swing very fast because you'll be afraid that the racket's going to fly out of your hand or maybe even slam against the ground. We don't want that. So there is a sweet spot to how far down you hold off the racket. But try this because the looseness and relaxation can instantly give you a few miles per hour just from that one tip. Now the second tip has to do with just your overall looseness. I want you to try serving where you just feel like a bag of bones, where you are just relaxed so much that you almost feel like it's a little sloppy. And so you don't even have to hit a serve right now. You can just be really relaxed in a shadow swing and you want to feel the kinetic chain of the body turning, coiling away, and then the body turning, turning back toward the net. And that the arm and the racket are trailing a little bit, which actually produces the whipping action. So you want to turn and be super loose, and then turn and be super loose again. But that body coil and then uncoil with the arm being super loose, is actually what's gonna produce that tremendous racket speed to hit the 100 mile an hour serve. If you think about what they build houses out of, right? Two by fours, and two by fours are strong and rigid, but then you think about a whip, right? <laughs> right? You think about like Indiana Jones and the <laughs> his whip. So the whip travels really fast, the two by four is really strong. I see a lot of amateurs thinking that serving 100 miles an hour has to do with muscle and being tight and being strong has really very little to do with that. And what it actually has to do with is body mechanics and using the right kinetic chain through the body. So practice being super, super loose in a shadow swing. Again, I haven't even hit a ball yet, and I will, don't worry. But I want you to be really relaxed, and you can do this right now at your house if you'd like. Just turn the body and then turn the body. It's almost like I'm hitting a ground stroke. You can see my body coil away from the net and then turn toward the net. Well, it's the same idea with the serve as well. You can see that my body movement on a forehand is very similar to the body movement on a serve. So don't face forward and arch your back and then hit forward like you're a catapult making that move. Have it be almost like a ground stroke where you turn the body and then you turn the body and the arm just goes for a ride. I can already feel right now with my hand hanging off the racket, it is incredibly loose, my arm, uh, just because there's very little tension and I know it's gonna help me hit a faster serve. Now, tip number three. This is about making sure that we don't use the waiter's tray. Even in intermediate players, even players who serve 80 miles an hour, sometimes get into this waiter's tray position. And, and let me show you what, serving this way. They go like this, right? So they lay their, that was actually a pretty good serve for me, you know, waiter's tray, right? That's that 83, 85 mile an hour serve that if you make these changes, you're gonna serve much better. That's actually a good representation of it. What we need to learn is not that waiter's tray, but to actually use the proper motion that gets us into that trophy pose. So let me show you, and, and if you've watched any of my videos on YouTube, TikTok, uh, Instagram, on my website, 2 you understand the idea of the birthday hat. 
Big fan of the birthday hat because it gives you the instant feedback you need to know if you're doing the waiter's tray or if you're doing it correctly. See, the waiter's tray serve would never hit a birthday hat. But if you serve the way Federer does or Kyrgios, uh, even Sam Groth, uh, Osaka, Djokovic, you'll see that their racket passes right in over the head. And if there's a birthday hat on your head, you'll knock it off. About five, six years ago, maybe even seven years ago at this point, I'm getting old, um, I was teaching a bunch of seven and eight-year-olds and I told them that unicorns cannot serve correctly. And they all laughed. I'm like, no, it's true because, and, and I showed them Federer serve. I said, if Federer were a unicorn, his racket would hit his horn and then the racket would stop. And it made sense to them. So that week I went out and got a bunch of birthday hats and I gave it to the kids. And yeah, this was about 2014, 2015. And uh, the parents were amazed, the kids were amazed. They're like, oh my gosh, they totally got it, even at that young age. So go out and buy a birthday hat and hit serves while wearing the birthday hat. It'll give you the instant feedback that you moved the racket correctly. That's what you want. You can notice I knocked the birthday hat off of my head. So how can we try this or, or practice this? If you're someone who has a slight waiter's tray position where your racket would not hit the birthday hat, I want you to serve starting in this position where you could actually place a ball in the throat of the racket. You'll see my elbow is pointing back, my palm is down, my strings are down, and I want you to toss the ball, then knock the birthday hat off your head, and then serve. Again, I'm gonna have my hand slightly hanging off the racket to be really loose. I'm gonna take a deep breath and just relax my body at the beginning of the serve. My strings are pointing down. I'm gonna toss the ball and very loosely, I've actually heard coaches talk about like this is the cobra. It's like a cobra, right? Ready to, almost like a cobra ready to strike, right? Like your arm position and your hand position. I've heard it called the goose or the dinosaur. Just like this position where the wrist is laid over and really relaxed, strings pointing down. I want you to toss the ball and then knock the birthday hat off your head and you're gonna do it very loosely. Toss, knock the birthday hat off, and hit. And I could feel that serve went quite fast, and there was very little going on with my body because my hand was off, because I took a deep breath, because I started in this proper throwing motion position, and I tossed first, that's the key, don't knock the birthday hat off and then toss. Toss, then knock the birthday hat off, and it just produced an effortless serve. I'm willing to bet with very little body use, which we're gonna talk about next, I probably served that ball 90 miles an hour and there was almost no effort to it. So if we're adding two more tips here, we're gonna hit a much faster serve. So now, actually I'll keep this on because I wanna to talk to you about your leg use. I wanna to talk to you about the timing of your legs. We, we talked uh, two tips ago about turning the body and you know, coiling and uncoiling. Look at that, I hit the birthday head on. I forgot I had the birthday head on. I'm so used to wearing it. We talked about the body turning and then unturning and coiling and uncoiling, but we also want to make sure that we're using the legs correctly. I want you to film your serve because I want you to, in slow motion, look to see when you are engaging your legs. And there is a very simple and easy to notice um, formula or relationship is a better word. There's a simple to notice relationship between the legs and what the racket and, and actually the tossing arm are doing. So I want you to think of it this way. Remember, we got our hand hanging off. We're, we're turning our body. We're nice and loose. We're going to get into this palm down position. When you toss the ball, when the ball comes out of your hand, that's when I want you to begin the knee bend. The knee bend begins when the ball leaves your hand and as your, both arms are going up. So think of it as the body goes the opposite direction as the arms. So as my arms go up and the ball comes out of my hand, I'm going to release the ball around head level. That's when my body goes down. Then when the racket gets to my birthday hat, that's when my body goes up it's not just important that we use our legs. And there are a lot of tennis players who serve sub 100 miles an hour who do bend their legs. But it's important that you're bending your knees and exploding at the right time to maximize the effectiveness of the leg drive. So here's how it works. I want you, and I'll actually do this from the side just so you can see it maybe a little better. When the ball comes out of my hand 
and as my racket begins its path to the birthday hat, that's when you're gonna sink down. And when you get to the birthday hat, that's when your body should begin going up with the tossing arm and the racket going down. The knee bend occurs between the ball leaving your hand and the racket getting to the birthday hat. Let me say that again. When the ball releases out of your hand, the knees go down and they go down until the racket reaches the birthday hat. From this point, the racket is gonna begin dropping. So to accentuate that drop and to whip the racket around more, we actually at this point want to begin the knees going up. Now how do you do that? You film yourself. You film yourself and you adjust when your knees are, are, are I mean this is gonna be a little bit of research on your end to film yourself, but you've gotta look at when your knees are engaged, when you're going down, when you're driving up, I watch a lot of players on social media when they post their serves. Most kids, most intermediate players, begin the leg drive when the racket has already dropped. Remember, I'm telling you, look at, um, look at Kiri, uh, not Kiri, yeah, look at Kyrgios, look at Federer, look at Osaka, look at uh, Ash Barty, uh, look at Dimitrov. Dimitrov actually begins his leg drive, just like Riley Opelka, they, they begin their leg drive just before they get to the birthday hat. You can begin the leg drive just before you get to the birthday hat or as you get to the birthday hat. But most amateurs I see, they begin their leg drive when the racket has already dropped and it's too late at that point to maximize the shoulder stretch that occurs when the racket's dropping and the body is driving up. So if you aren't someone who typically films yourself serving, please film yourself and look for that relationship. Do it in slow motion, scroll the video, see that when the ball comes out of your hand, uh, out of your tossing hand, that the knees start to bend. And then when the racket hits the birthday hat, and I hope you're wearing a birthday hat when you film yourself, as the racket hits the birthday hat, that's when your body begins driving up. It's an incredible amount of speed that occurs from doing that. Let me hit a couple serves. I'm actually gonna serve in slow motion. Well, I'll serve uh, one regular speed and then you'll watch one in slow motion and you'll see the exact relationship I'm talking about when it comes to when I bend my knees and when I begin exploding has to do with when the ball comes out of my hand and when the racket gets in over my head. Now the last tip has to do with harnessing a reactive break as you hit the ball that slows the, body's, the body down, slows the hitting shoulder down, and whips the racket through contact. This is what I call the power X, where you tuck your tossing arm up against your body. Look at Dominic Thiem as he's hitting a serve. Look at Andy Murray as he's hitting a serve. Those players are very well known for throwing this arm back. But if you watch them as they hit the ball, they pull their tossing arm up against their body. The reason for that is very simple. Remember how we turned and then we're, we're coiling and uncoiling? We're coiling our body and then we're uncoiling? Well, the most amount of power we can generate will come from abruptly stopping the body to whip the racket through. If, if you don't believe me, just check out Federer hitting a serve. At contact, his arm looks like it's, a, it's broken and it's in a sling, like it's in a cast and the doctor gave him a sling to, to put it against his body. When you make that move and you drop the tossing arm in front of you and then whip it up against your body, that slows the body's uncoiling down, which actually accelerates the racket. So from the back, you'll see that when I'm done, I'm actually waving to you with my left hand, since I'm right-handed, I'm actually waving to you underneath my armpit. See that? Super loose, super relaxed. But because we coiled, we're using our legs, we're going up to the ball appropriately. If we can stop the body's rotation by pulling this arm in, we whip the racket so much faster we can really bomb the serve. So try those tips out. 
hold the racket slightly lower than you typically do. That way you can be really loose when you practice the turn and the unturn, the coil and the uncoil. Practice serving, let me demonstrate it. Practice serving with your palm down, wearing a birthday hat, toss and knock the birthday hat off of your head, being really loose. Film yourself, and you should be filming yourself for all of this and checking all of this with your own technique. After you toss, make sure that's when your knees bend, and then when the racket gets above your head, that's when the leg drive occurs. And you can just shadow swing that. Turn, pretend to toss, bend your knees and bring the racket in over your head, and when you get to this point, that's when your legs should drive up. It will stretch the shoulder back as much as you're physically capable, and then you'll serve much faster. And last, harness this reactive break, where when you're uncoiling, you pull this arm in and you whip the racket through contact. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I'm so excited for you to try these tips to get you over the hump and get you serving 100 miles per hour. This is Ryan from 2MinuteTennis.net, and I'll see you in the next video.